In the picture? Yes, in the picture. Alright, chapter 2 of Levi. Now therefore know that the Lord shall execute judgment upon the sons of men. Because when the rocks are being rent and the sun quenched and the waters dried up and the fire cowering and all creation troubled and the invisible spirits melting away and Hades taketh spoils through the visitations of the Most High. Men will be unbelieving and persist in their iniquity. On this account with punishment shall they be judged. Therefore the Most High hath heard thy prayer to separate thee from iniquity, that thou should come, become to him a son and a servant and a minister of his presence. The light of knowledge shalt thou light up in Jacob, and as the sun shalt thou be to all the seed of Israel. And there shall be given to thee a blessing unto all thy seed until the Lord shall visit all the Gentiles in his tender mercies forever. And therefore there have been given to thee counsel and understanding that thou mightest instruct thy sons concerning this because they that bless him shall be blessed and they that curse him shall perish. And thereupon the angel opened to me the gates of heaven and I saw the holy temple and upon a throne of glory the most high. And he said to me, Levi, I have given thee the blessing of the priesthood until I come and sojourn in the midst of Israel. Then the angel brought me down to the earth and gave me a shield and a sword and said to me, Execute vengeance on Shechem because of Dinah thy sister and I will be with thee because the Lord hath sent me. Now this part is in the Bible. Yep. Yes. Dinah, because Dinah was raped. Um, Dinah was their sister. And I destroyed at that time the sons of Hamor as it is written in the heavenly table. And I said to him, I pray thee, O Lord, tell me thy name, that I may call upon thee in a day of tribulation. And he said, I am the angel who intercedeth for the nation of Israel, that they may not be smitten utterly, for every evil spirit attacketh it. And after these things I awaked and blessed the Most High and the angel who intercedeth for the nation of Israel and for all the righteous. Well, it's Michael. Yeah. It's Kaduri, isn't it? <coughs> and I was going to my father. I found a, this is chapter 3. I found a brazen shield. Wherefore also the name of the mountain is Aspis, which is near Gebel, to the south of Abila. And I kept these words in my heart, and after this I counseled my father and Reuben, my brother, to bid the sons of Hamor not to be circumcised, for I was jealous because of the abomination which they had wrought on my sister. And I slew Shechem first, and Simeon slew Hamor. And after this my brothers came and smote that city with the edge of the sword. And my father heard these things and was wroth, and he was grieved in that day they had received the circumcision and after that had been put to death. And in his blessings he looked amiss upon us, for we sinned because we had done this thing against his will, and he was sick on that day. But I saw that the sentence of God was for evil upon Shechem, for they sought to do to Sarah and Rebekah as they had done to Dinah, our sister. But the Lord prevented them. And they persecuted Abraham, our father, when he was a stranger. And they vexed his flocks when they were big with young. And Eblaam, who was born in his house, they most shamefully handled. And thus they do to all strangers, taking away their wives by force, and they banished them. 
But the wrath of the Lord came upon them to the uttermost. And I said to my father Jacob, By thee will the Lord despoil the Canaanites and will give their land to thee and to thy seed after thee. For from this day forward shall Shechem be called a city of imbeciles, for as a man mocketh a fool, so did we mock them, because also they had wrought folly in Israel by defiling my sister. And we departed and came to Bethel. And there again I saw a vision as the former, after we had spent there seventy days. And I saw seven men in white raiment saying unto me, Arise, put on the robe of the priesthood and the crown of righteousness and the breastplate of understanding, the garment of truth and the late of faith and the turban of the head and the ephod of prophecy. And they severally carried these things and put them on me and said unto me, From henceforth become a priest of the Lord thou and thy seed for ever. And the first anointed me with holy oil and gave to me the staff of judgment. The second washed me with pure water and fed me with bread and wine, even the most holy things, and clad me with a holy and glorious robe. The third clothed me with a linen vestment like an ephod. The fourth put around me a girdle like unto purple. The fifth gave me a branch of rich olive. The sixth placed a crown on my head. The seventh placed on my head a diadem of priesthood and filled my hands with incense that I might serve as priest to the Lord God. And they said to me, Levi, thy seed shall be divided into three offices for a sign of the glory of the Lord who is to come. And the first portion shall be great yea, greater than it shall none be. The second shall be in the priesthood, and the third shall be called by a new name, because a king shall arise in Judah and shall establish a new priesthood after the fashion of the Gentiles. And his presence is beloved as a prophet of the Most High, of the seed of Abraham our father. Therefore, every desirable thing in Israel shall be for thee and for thy seed, and ye shall eat everything fair to look upon, and the table of the Lord shall thy seed apportion. And some of them shall be high priests and judges and scribes, for by their mouth shall the holy place be guarded. And when I awoke, I understood that this dream was like the first dream. And I hid this also in my heart and told it not to any man upon the earth. And after two days, I and Judah went up with our father Jacob to Isaac, our father's father. And my father's father blessed me according to all the words of the visions which I had seen. And he would not come with us to Bethel. And when we came to Bethel, my father saw a vision concerning me that I should be their priest unto God. And he rose up early in the morning and paid tithes of all to the Lord through me, And so we came to Hebron to dwell there. And Isaac called me continually to put me in remembrance of the law of the Lord, even as the angel of the Lord showed unto me. And he taught me the law of the priesthood of sacrifices. Whole burnt offerings, first fruits, free will (coughs) offerings and peace offerings. And each day he was instructing me and was busied on my behalf before the Lord and said to me, Beware of the spirit of fornication, for this shall continue, and shall by thy seed pollute the holy place. Take therefore to thyself a wife without blemish or pollution, while yet thou art young, and not of the race of strange nations. And before entering into the holy place, bathe, and when thou offerest the sacrifice, wash, and again when thou finishest the sacrifice, wash. Of twelve trees, having leaves offer to the Lord, as Abraham taught me also. And of every clean beast and bird offer a sacrifice to the Lord. And all of thy first fruits and of wine offer the first as a sacrifice to the Lord God. 
and every sacrifice thou shalt salt with salt. Now therefore observe whatsoever I command you, children, for whatsoever things I have heard from my fathers I have declared unto you. And behold, I am clear from your ungodliness and transgression, which ye shall commit in the end of the ages against the Saviour of the world, Christ, acting godlessly, deceiving Israel and stirring up against it great evils from the Lord. So it mentions Christ. Yes. Which has made the anointed one. Mm. The savior, well, the savior of the world, mm. the Christ, acting godlessly, deceiving Israel and stirring up against it evils, great evils. Now, I command you, children, for whatsoever things I have heard from my fathers, I have declared unto you. And behold, I am clear from your ungodliness and transgression which ye shall commit in the end of the ages against the Saviour of the world, Christ, acting godlessly, deceiving. He's prophesying of the scribes to come mm. from out of Levi. Mm. And of all thy first fruits and wine, offer the first as a sacrifice to the Lord God, and every sacrifice thou shalt salt with salt. Now therefore observe what I command you, Salt of purification. Yeah. Children, for whatsoever things I have heard from my... And I, behold, I am clear from your ungodliness and transgression, which ye shall commit in the end of the ages against the Saviour of the world, Christ. What are we talking about now? Yeah. Deceiving Israel and stirring up against it great evils from the Lord. So everything that's happening against Israel now is because of their transgression now against you. Mm. Stirring it all up against Israel. Mm. Totally. And ye shall deal lawlessly together with Israel. So he shall not bear with Jerusalem because of your wickedness. Well, that's exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. But the veil of the temple shall be rent so as not to cover your shame. Well, that happened at the cross. Mm. So it was rent then, and it's not covering their shame now. That's right. So it's before and after. Mm. Look at this. And ye, uh, and ye shall be scattered as captives among the Gentiles, which is what's happened, and ye shall be for a reproach and for a curse there. Hello? Mm. For the house which the Lord shall choose shall be called Jerusalem. For the house which the Lord shall choose shall be called Jerusalem as is contained in the book of Enoch, the righteous. That's why they want Jerusalem. Mm. Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is strong. New, yeah. Therefore I took a wife, I was 28 years old, and her name was Melka, and she conceived and bare a son, and I called his name Gersam, for we were sojourners in our land. And I saw concerning him that he would not be in the first rank, and Kohath was born in the 55th year of my life towards sunrise. And I saw in a night, I saw in a vision that he was standing on high in the midst of all the congregation. Therefore I called his name Kohath, which is beginning of majesty and instruction. And she bare me a third son in the fortieth year of my life. And since his mother bare him with difficulty, I called him Merari, that is, my bitterness, because he also was like to die. And Jochebed was born in Egypt in my sixty-fourth year, so I was renowned in the midst of my brethren. And Gersam took a wife and she bare to him Lomni and Semei and the sons of Kohath, 
Abram, Issachar, Hebron and Ozeel, and the sons of Merari, Muli and Malthus. And in the 94th year, Abram took Jochebed, my daughter, whoa, and in the 94th year, Abram, Ambram, no, not Abram, Ambram, took Jochebed, my daughter, to him to wife, for they were born in one day, he and my daughter. Eight years old was I when I went into the land of Canaan, and, and eighteen years when I flew Shechem, and at nineteen years I became priest, and at twenty-eight years I took a wife. And at forty-eight I went into Egypt. And behold, my children, ye are a third generation. In my hundred and eighteenth year, Joseph died. Yes. Mm. Joseph died. Levi shows how wisdom survives destruction. He has no use for scornful people. And now, my children, I command you, fear the Lord your God with your whole heart and walk in simplicity according to all his law. And do ye also teach your children letters that they may have understanding all their life, reading unceasingly the law of God. For everyone that knoweth the law of the Lord shall be honoured and shall not be a stranger whithersoever he goeth. Yea, many friends shall he gain more than his parents, and many men shall desire to serve him and to hear the law from his mouth. Work righteousness, therefore, my children, upon the earth, that ye may have it as a treasure in heaven, and sow good things in your souls, that ye may find them in your life. But if ye sow evil things, ye shall reap every trouble and affliction. Get wisdom in the fear of God with diligence, for though there be a leading into captivity and cities and lands be destroyed, and gold and silver and every possession perish, the wisdom of the wise naught can take away, save the blindness of ungodliness and the callousness that comes of sin. For if one keep oneself from these evil things, then even among his enemies shall wisdom be a glory to him. And in a strange country, a fatherland, and in the midst of foes, shall prove a friend. Whosoever teaches noble things and does them shall be honoured, shall be enthroned with kings, as was also Joseph, my brother. Therefore, my children, I have learnt that at the end of the ages ye will transgress against the Lord, stretching out hands to wickedness against him and to all the Gentiles, shall ye become a scorn. For our father Israel is pure from the transgressions of the chief priests who shall lay their hands upon the Saviour of the world. For as the heaven is purer in the Lord's sight than the earth, so also be ye the lights of Israel purer purer than all the Gentiles. But if ye be darkened through transgressions, what therefore will all the Gentiles do, living in blindness? Ye shall bring a curse upon our race, because the light of the law which was given for to lighten every man this ye desire to destroy by teaching commandments contrary to the ordinances of God. The offerings of the Lord ye shall rob, and from his portion shall ye steal choice portions, eating them contemptuously with harlots. And out of covetousness ye shall teach the commandments of the Lord. Wedded women shall ye pollute, and the virgins of Jerusalem shall ye defile. And with harlots and, adulter and adulteresses shall ye be joined, and the daughters of the Gentiles shall ye take to wife, purifying them with an unlawful purification, and your union shall be like unto Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. 
and ye shall be puffed up because of your priesthood, lifting yourselves up against men, and not only so, but also against the commands of God. For ye shall contemn the holy things with jests and laughter. Therefore the temple which the Lord shall choose shall be laid waste through your uncleanness, and ye shall be captives throughout all nations. And ye shall be an abomination unto them, and ye shall receive reproach and everlasting shame, everlasting shame from the righteous judgment of God. Mm. And all who hate you shall rejoice at your destruction. Hello! And if you were not to receive mercy through Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, our fathers, not one of our seed, should be left upon the earth. And now I have learnt that for seventy weeks ye shall go astray and profane the priesthood and pollute the sacrifices. And ye shall make void the law and set at naught the words of the prophets by evil perverseness, and ye shall persecute righteous men and hate the godly. The words of the faithful shall ye abhor. Seventy weeks. Seventy weeks of Daniel and it's your life. Seventy is a year. Yeah. Through sixty days. Yeah. I think I covered that then. Yes, that's earlier. Uh, it's, it's, it, the 70 weeks of Daniel is actually twofold because in the first part, at the cross, the 69 weeks would be fulfilled. You're cut off. That's the 69 weeks. But the final week, the 70th week, <coughs> has been your entire life of 69 years. Mm-hmm. Or 70 Hebrew years. Uh, okay. And a man who reneweth the law and the power of the Most High, ye shall call a deceiver. And at last ye shall rush upon him to slay him, not knowing his dignity, taking innocent blood through wickedness upon your heads. And your holy places shall be laid waste, even to the ground because of him. And ye shall have no place that is clean, but ye shall be among the Gentiles a curse and a dispersion, until he shall again visit you, and in pity shall receive you through faith and water. Chapter 5 Prophecies, the coming of the Messiah Okay Now this says this was written 100 years before Christ Now they know that's coming back Well this is still the Testament of No. And whereas we have heard concerning the seventy weeks, also here also concerning the priesthood, for in each jubilee there shall be a priesthood. And in the first jubilee the first who is anointed to the priesthood shall be great and shall speak to God as a, as to a father. And his priesthood shall be perfect with the Lord, and in the day of his gladness shall he arise for the salvation of the world. In the second jubilee, he that is anointed shall be conceived in the sorrow of beloved ones, and his priesthood shall be honoured and shall be glorified by all. And the third priest shall he taken hold of by sorrow, and the fourth shall be in pain, because unrighteousness shall gather itself against him exceedingly, and all Israel shall hate each one his neighbour. And the fifth 
shall be taken hold of by darkness, likewise also the sixth and the seventh. And in the seventh shall be such pollution as I cannot express before men, for they shall know it who do these things. Therefore shall they be taken captive and become a prey, and their land and their substance shall be destroyed. And in the fifth week they shall return to their desolate country and shall renew the house of the Lord. And in the seventh week shall become priests who are idolaters, adulterers, lovers of money, proud, lawless, lasciviousness, abusers of children and beasts. And after their punishment shall have come from the Lord, the priesthood shall fail. Then shall the Lord raise up a new priest. And to him all the words of the Lord shall be revealed, and he shall execute a righteous judgment upon the earth for a multitude of days. And his star shall arise in heaven as of a king, lighting up the light of knowledge as the sun the day, and he shall be magnified in the world. He shall <clears throat> shine forth as the sun on the earth, and shall remove all darkness from under heaven, and there shall be peace in all the earth. The heavens shall exult in his days, and the earth shall be glad, and the clouds shall rejoice. And the knowledge of the Lord shall be poured forth upon the earth as the water of the seas, and the angels of the glory of the presence of the Lord shall be glad in him. The heavens shall be opened, and from the temple of glory shall come upon him sanctification with the Father's voice, as from Abraham to Isaac. And the glory of the Most High shall be uttered over him, and the spirit of understanding and sanctification shall rest upon him in the water. For he shall give the majesty of the Lord to his sons in truth forevermore. And there shall none succeed him for all generations forever. And in his priesthood the Gentiles shall be multiplied in knowledge upon the earth and enlightened through the grace of the Lord. In his priesthood shall sin come to an end and the lawless shall cease to do evil. And he shall open the gates of paradise and shall remove the threatening sword against Adam and he shall give to the saints to eat from the tree of life and the spirit of holiness shall be on them. And Belia, Belia, Belia shall be bound by him and he shall give power to his children to tread upon the evil spirits. And the Lord shall rejoice in his children and be well pleased in his beloved ones forever. Then shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob exult, and I will be glad, and all the saints shall clothe themselves with joy. And now, my children, ye have heard all. Choose therefore for yourselves either, either the light or the darkness, either the law of the Lord or the works of Belial. And his sons answered him, saying, Before the Lord we will walk according to his law. And their father said unto them, The Lord is witness, and his angels are witnesses, and ye are witnesses, and I am a witness concerning the word of your mouth. And his sons said unto him, We are witnesses. And thus Levi ceased commanding his sons, and he stretched out his foot on the bed and was gathered to his fathers after he had lived a hundred and thirty-seven years. And they laid him in a coffin, and afterwards they buried him in Hebron. With I, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How does that work? Mm -hmm. And they laid him in a coffin and afterwards they buried him in Hebron but it says with I Abraham, Isaac and Jacob interesting I 
Uh, well, that's chapter 5 and then it goes back to next chapter 1. This is the testament of Jude, Judah, fourth son of Jacob and Leah. Mm. He is the giant, athlete, warrior. He recounts heroic deeds. He runs so fast that he can outstrip a hind. That's what you used to do. Mm. The copy of the words of Judah, what things he spake to his sons before he died. They were much bigger people, didn't they? Mm. They gathered themselves together therefore and came to him and he said to them, Hearken my children to Judah your father, I was the fourth son born to my father Jacob and Leah my son named Judah, saying, I give thanks to the Lord because he has given me a fourth son also. I was swift in my youth and obedient to my father in everything and I honoured my mother and my mother's sister. And it came to pass when I became a man that my father blessed me, saying, Thou shalt be a king, prospering in all things. And the Lord showed me favour in all my works, both in the field and in the house. I know that I raised a hind and caught it and prepared the meat for my father and he did eat. And the rose I used to master in the chase and overtake all that was in the plain. A wild mare I overtook and caught it and tamed it. I slew a lion and plucked a kid out of its mouth. I took a bear by its paw and hurled it down the cliff and it was crushed. I outran the wild boar and seizing it as I ran I tore it asunder. A leopard in Hebron leapt upon my dog, and I caught it by the tail and hurled it on the rocks, and it was broken in twain. I found a wild ox feeding in the fields and seizing it by the horns and whirling it round and stunning it, I cast it from me and slew it. And when the two kings of the Canaanites came sheathed in armour against our flock and much people with them, single-handed, I rushed upon the king of Hazor and smote him on the greaves and dragged him down and so I slew him. And the other, the king of Tapua, as he sat upon his horse I slew and so I gathered all his people. Achor the king, a man of giant stature, I found hurling javelins before and behind as he sat on horseback. And I took up a stone of sixty pounds weight and hurled it and smote his horse and killed it. And I fought with his other... Pretty big fellow. Yeah. And I fought with his other, this other two, for two hours and I clave his shield in twain and I chopped off his feet and killed him. Ugh. I was stripping off his best plate, breastplate, behold, nine men, his companions, began to fight with me and I wound my garment on my hand and I slung stones at them and killed four of them. Oh, jeez, so weird. Ah, uh, okay. Therefore my father was free from anxiety in the wars when I was with my brethren. For he saw in a vision concerning me that an angel of might followed me everywhere that I should not be overcome. Mm. But your story. Mm -hmm. And in the south there came upon us a greater war than that in Shechem. And I jo joined in battle array with my brethren and pursued a thousand men and slew of them two hundred and four kings. And I went up upon the wall and I slew four mighty men. And so we captured Hazor and took all the spoil. And the next day we departed to Aratan, a strong city walled and inaccessible, threatening us with death. But I and Gad approached on the east side of the city and Reuben and Levi on the west. And they that were upon the wall, thinking that we were done, were drawn down against us. And so my brothers secretly climbed up on the wall and both sides by stakes and entered the cities while the men knew it not. And we took it with the edge of the sword. And as for those who had taken refuge in the tower, we set fire to the tower and took both it and them. And as we were departing, the men of Tapua seized our spoil, and seeing this, we fought with them. And we slew them all and recovered our spoil. And when I was at the waters of Kozeba, the men of Jobal came against us to battle and we fought with them and routed them and their allies from Shiloh we slew and we did not leave them power to come against us. And the men of Machia came upon us the fifth day to seize our spoil and we attacked them and overcame them in fierce battle for there was a host of mighty men amongst them and he slew them before they had gone up the ascent. And when we came to their city their women rolled upon us stones from the brow 
of the hill on which the city stood. And I, Simeon, and ourselves behind the town and seized upon the heights and destroyed the city also. And the next day it was told us that the king of the city of Gash with us, the mighty host, was coming against us. I, therefore, and Dan feigned ourselves to be Amorites, and as allies went into their city, and in the depth of night our brethren came, and we opened to them the gates, and we destroyed all the men and their substance, and we took for a prey all that was theirs, and their three walls we cast down. We drew near to Thamna, where was all the substance of the hostile kings. Then being insulted by them, I was therefore wroth, and rushed against them to the summit, and they kept singing against me stones and darts, and had not Dan, my brother, aided me, they would have slain me. And we came upon them, therefore, with wrath, and they all fled, and passing by another, they fought my father, and he made peace with them. And we did to them no hurt, and they became tributary to us, and we restored to them their spoil. And I built them, and my father built Pabael, and I was twenty years old when this war befell, and the Canaanites feared me and my brethren. I had much cattle, and I had for chief herdsmen, Iram, the Adol, Adulamite. And when I went to him, I saw Pasaba, king of Adolan, and he spake unto us, and he made us a feast. And when I was heated, he gave me his daughter, Bashua, to wife. She bare me Er, and Onan, and Shelah, and two of the lords smote, for Shelah lived, and his children are ye. Mm -hmm. Oh, it goes on and on. So interesting. Well, I don't want you to read it. Mm. But he's right about the angel of night. That's what I got. Mm. Yeah. Just don't piss me off. Anything more to say, my dear? No.